picks and bans had that first pick. Uh, Gragas as well, too. So they really had that Yasuo plan all along, it seemed like. There's a Yasuo <laughs> ban, wow, against KT. I don't know about that. I'm a bit surprised by that. I don't yeah. really think that's necessary. There's a Thresh ban, so no Thresh this game for Mad Life. Mad Life was making plays on Thresh even after they were so far down that yeah. they couldn't really recover from that. Well, Mad Life played well that game, but when you're behind that much, there's only so much you can do from the support role, you know, even if you're Mad Life. And there's a Gragas ban as well against KT. So CJ saying, all right, you're just going to have to play something completely different. Now, they banned the Sejuani in game one, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, yes, score was has been great on that champion, but score has been showing up on Rek'Sai and Gragas as well. So I'm not really sure what they were trying to accomplish with the Sejuani ban. I think they that was a little bit of an overreach for them right there, especially since we know Ambition and Sejuani is perfectly serviceable. And there is a Zir banned out, this time by KT Rolster, so freeing or that champion today it would seem and the Sejuani ban against KT so they're gonna first pick Rek'Sai more than likely it looks you like would, they'll try KT could ban Rek'Sai here too and really make things interesting do you want to give Callista to space though yeah Is I mean KT gave up Callista last week it's true. That is uh, true. And they gave it to an extremely 80 carry focused team. They well, gave it to Fury. Okay, they're not going to give it to Space though. I mean, I suppose if you're KT and you you do play those big engaged dive comps, you can give up those 80 carries. But not wanting to do that this time. So you'd imagine the Rexi or maybe the Cassiopeias are going to be picked first. Yeah. It will be. Okay. Going to take the Cassiopeia. Yeah, it was banned by CJ in the last game, so they will. First pick it on the blue side this time around, but that means Rek'Sai and Alistair yep. going to be the choices. Alistair such a wonderful AD carry again, or uh, support rather <laughs> against Cassiopeia uh, because of the fact that Cassiopeia has relatively short range and you could bounce her out of fights even after she ults because you just wait for her petrifying gaze to come in, immediately hit Unbreakable Will, and then remove her while that stun is up so the DPS becomes much, much harder to deal with. And will this be a Lee Sin? Remember, Cinder Hulk was nerfed. In right. 5.9. Yeah, Lee Sin and other junglers like him uh, certainly do have a bit more presence. And look at that, the Vayne locked in as well, too. Lee Sin and Vayne for CJ. So already this comp getting a bit interesting on the CJ Antis side. Not really going to help with their wave clear problems whatsoever. And they're not going to be able to get that Alistair Vayne combo, which is a really effective combination. But two major scaling threats. They do have better wave clear this time around, at least with the Cassiopeia and they could lane swap here as well as some really early pressure with the Cinder Hulk nerfs to damage to champions. Uh, that means that Lee Sin is way better now in the 2v2. If you get like a solo laner and a jungler from each team, right. Lee Sin's power has comparatively gone up dramatically. Makes a lot of sense, as would the picks for LeBlanc and Jinx as well too. I mean, picking up this Jinx, KT, you know, they see that lack of wave clear. A good response would be just to push as fast as and, and as uh, hard as they can. Especially, I think you're absolutely right, Doa, especially because Vayne is likely to lane swap here, right. and having Jinx will win the fast push battle. Yeah, you can just push down okay. the uh, 2v1 and then rotate up to where the 2v2 is. All right, taking Oriana, which is a winning matchup into Cassiopeia, uh, something that we're seeing increasing with increasing frequency, two early game junglers here. Lee Sin still having a little bit of an edge, depending on whether he builds that Cinder Hulk or the Warrior enchantment. So, do you maybe go with a Rumble here if you're uh, CJ then? Yeah, it's not a top. Lane. It's not a bad pickup to help get you into that late game stage. Could go for Maokai as well. Okay, yeah. A little bit more scaling, depending on what he builds. Righteous Glory may be a good early pickup, and they have a tank line now to help them out. So early game jungler pick shouldn't matter too much with this composition, hmm. considering that they do scale so well at three other roles in Maokai, Vayne, and Cassiopeia into the late game. So KT is just going to really need to push as hard as they can and hope that they can take down a lot of turrets early. Seems like. Well, depends on how they round this one out. If they have Oh, please don't do this. <laughs> yes, please. Please, uh, please do it. Don't listen to Monty. Don't please do this do to it. me someday. Please do it someday. <laughs> you need to do this. They would have it a really is. solid 1-3-1 one, one if they did this. It is your well, destiny. More like 4-1, actually. They'd probably be unlikely to 1-3-1 one, one with this composition. Um, what? 
So taking the Jinx here, they can go for something like Anar and set up for really big wombo combos in the late game and scale very well also. They have crazy, crazy control, great scaling on Orianna mm -hmm. and on Jinx. Not the Volar Bear. I don't, I don't agree with that. You need something which can deal with the vein. Okay. Yeah, All right. that works. Yeah. Whimsy is pretty good at dealing with veins. And just having that having that wild growth presence too right. onto Alistair or Rek'Sai for an engage is, is pretty nice. So a lot of buffs, a lot of utility on this KT team to peel for Arrow. Someday, of course, he's been playing top lane Lulu longer than just about anybody, stretching all the way back to when the KT Bullets used to do it when he was on that team. Yeah. When he was... I remember watching him do like, that in, like, NLB way back when. <laughs> yeah, 15, 16 years old, so... Yeah. It's been a while. This guy's been a pro for many years at this stage. Yeah, pretty much. So there's our final roster for this second game. Now, do you still lane swap with this? I think it's perfectly fine to lane swap. In fact, if KT wants to give someday the blue buff in a lane swap scenario, he's going to be able to farm really, really well and harass Vayne very effectively if That's Vayne's true. left alone. Yeah. So KT can fast push and do really well with Lulu in the lane swap like because it. Rek'Sai isn't going to need that blue buff. So that would be a really exciting start from KT. Hmm. I'll see if they can do it. CJ with certainly a good comp for the late game if they can survive well, long enough to use KT it. KT no slouch in the late game either. Well, the advantage yeah. is not going to be too great, especially considering Rek'Sai does more in the late game than Lee Sin does, unless Ambition gets some incredibly good kicks. True enough. And so that means we are in for a pretty exciting game number two. Can KT get the 2-0 over CJ, or will CJ tie it up and force that game three? Let's get in the game and find out. Here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ Antis versus KT Rolster. And it would be pretty huge for KT to come in and 2-0 a team like CJ Antis. They did extremely well in game number one, but uh, game two looks like it certainly could be a long one. It could be a, a close one, too. Yeah. Uh, unless KT decides to fast push. I do think that KT's composition gives them so many options here. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they have that really good opportunity. They read the Vayne. Vayne was picked very early in the draft for CJ. They responded to it. They built a composition that can do well in the 2v2 or in the lane swap. I mean, KT's got a good team fight as well, if they choose to use that. I, I, both teams have really strong team fighting yeah. in this game. Well, I mean, i just saying, you know, continuing on what you were saying earlier, where KT has options, you know, they can split yeah. push, they can team fight, they can fast push, they can really do whatever fits best. And it I, looks like they will do that lane swap as well. I really like this comp, this comp from KT. As yeah. a reaction to what CJ done, has done, again, KT coming out with, we don't see top lane Lulu that much anymore, but yeah. someday picking some unorthodox champions, at least as far as the current meta is concerned. And we'll see if he can make it work again. It looks like he will be starting at the Raptors with some help from Nagne as he giggles madly. As Lulu does. KT is still one of the best in the draft in Korea. They're very adaptive. Yeah. They they predict team compositions and and build very well. Well, if they keep playing like this all season, it would be very cool to see them at Worlds. Yeah, first time a KT team will will have gone to Worlds actually yeah. after the massive failure of the KT Arrows and the Gauntlet. Yep. And the uh, KT Bullets and Champion Summer in 2013. That was what I, that hurts me so much, though. <laughs> you know that. We don't talk I about know. that. We don't talk about that one because that was such a tragedy <laughs> because I don't think KT Arrows would have done necessarily much better than Nodge and White Shield did at Worlds just because of the inconsistency of their style. Sure. But KT Bullets. They would have won Worlds would, if well, they would have won. Or SK Telecom. I mean, yeah, it, 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 at least we could have had an amazing final potentially at Worlds in that yeah, case. I, I'm very sad about that. Because I, I just feel that they were pretty much unquestionably the second best team in the world at the time, and we didn't even get to see them at the tournament. So yeah. I was bumped out. Pretty bizarre. Odd how it all worked out. All right, out. so Blue Day someday does get the blue buff here. They actually go for the blue steel. Mm -hmm. So as, as predicted, this is going to be their strategy coming into this game. Yeah, so they'll get that 
Lulu versus Vayne lane, and Lulu with the blue buff. A lot of those glitter lances coming in, using that E on Vayne if she tumbles too close. Oh, or just E on yourself, I suppose, too, to absorb that damage from Vayne when she tumbles in. I like it. Uh, early Dragon from uh, CJ as well, too, it looks like. I don't know if they're going to be able to finish this. Remember, Dragon was buffed right here, but no one actually putting pressure down. They've got, they've got a ward. Wow, they're yeah. actually going to give this up, even with all that Dragon damage. And uh, so that means they're, KT's... They're fast pushing. Yeah, KT's going to get this top turret. So is the Dragon worth it? Oh, Pixar uh, actually taking wow. a couple tower hits right there. That was oh, a bit okay. of a mistake. Yeah. But they really want to push this turret as fast as they can. Yeah, they're going to be trading a dragon deficit for this early gold advantage, mm -hmm. making that conscious decision. And right. now we see Madlife and Shy walking into the top side. Are they actually going to be able to kill this top turret? I'm not so sure. Yeah, they should be able to. Yeah, it'll be close. You got minigun jinx. Oh, yeah, I suppose. All right. Good enough. Ward just for safety's sake from Fixer, and it looks like they will not be able to do it. Oh, it's yeah, going to be close. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, it's a couple auto attacks off. Someday now coming up here to help out, but that will delay the recall and give Vayne some more free farming in the bottom side. That's actually very important. Actually, uh, there's oh, going to be a big up. dive here. Yeah, score coming up as well, too. Madlife, there's a slow on to him. Score catches him as well. Knock up on to Madlife. This is going to be first blood potentially for KT. It will indeed be who's going to get it, and it's going to be Someday. Someday gets that first blood, which is pretty nice. Looks like they're going to have the 1v1 lane. That was pretty tricky. So they just faked the recall right there. Guess so. And now they may punish even further. Man, they're staying here wow, for this another one. Wow, They're th going to go up to Shy But there's now. no pressure. I mean, Vayne is not putting any pressure on the bottom side. So KT, there's no downside oh. to doing this right now. Goodbye, Absolutely Shy. none. They're going to get the reset off the tower kill as well. Watch this. Get excited. Fixer. Follow through. Oh, there, there we go. Shy. There's the Paul Fry's. Yep, another slow comes in. And it's going to be another kill. Score picking not that one up. Not the turret. even remotely worth it to flash right there if you're shy. That's yeah. that's a big error. You're not getting out of that one. The tower was so low. Even if you flash, Jinx is going to hit her passive and then just run right past you. You have four people trying to dive. And meanwhile, the freeze still going on. They have no pressure at the bottom side of the map right now. And that means that that tower, that kill, totally free for KT. Wow. So uh, CJ really counting on space to carry hard with his vein later on. But already... a Pretty big deficit at just a few minutes into the game here, just six minutes in. Well, Shy at least is going to get some time to farm back up here in the bottom side, and he's not behind on levels. So there, that is a bit of an advantage someday just here to hold the lane while he waits for top side to push out, handing that off to Nagne. And Nagne has been really bullied in this lane matchup. Look at that, actually. Oh, 28 wow. to 50. So yeah, you're right. Coco just crushing him. Huh. Which is not something you'd expect to see in this matchup, too. Well, I've kind of seen it both ways. I mean, at uh, it seems like Oriana should be able to, yes. you know, farm Oriana should well win enough. this lane. Yeah, you have longer range, you have better control, you have a shield to deal with her damage over time. Yes, you should absolutely win this lane. I, I yeah. think as Oriana. All you have to do is dodge the poison. You don't really need to worry about the range too much. When you get hit by poison, your shield just deals with it. So. Yeah, it should. In theory. And Arrow and Fixer might be in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, CJ coming in. The flash from Arrow happens right away. Score coming down. The teleport as well. Slow doesn't land onto space, though. Can they maybe catch Mad Life here? There's no flash. TP. Teleport coming in, though, for CJ. KT needs to back off right now. There is Shy knocking score back into the fight. Shy getting very low, and here comes Nagne. Where's that level six? There it is. Shockwave, but Mad Life manages to get out anyway. Still ends up being a kill on the top laner for KT. So they still come away with the win, and they may come away with a turret here, too. Yeah, this fast push, very effective as long as Cassiopeia Ooh, isn't there to wave clear. So here we go. I think that flash may have been a little bit of an overcommitment if he had stayed and hit that turret. Maybe they would have been able to kill it. Either way. Five people on the bottom side, though. But there's again, there's no pressure. Shy was just farming there close to his turret. They've been playing so far back in the lanes because CJ's playing scared. I think the hope really rests in Coco right now. He's been yes. able to get some damage done on the mid lane turret, been able to get a lot of farm. Nagne caught up quite a bit, actually, within the last few minutes before he roamed down to bot. Only and Shy, yeah, yeah, Shy isn't that behind either. So right. there's still hope for CJ here. They are one and a half K down based on these kills, but Nagne 
at that disadvantage. He did roam, so he lost even more CS light right there. Lost some damage onto his turret as well. I mean, KT's getting some kills, but what they really need, I feel like, is the turrets. Uh, yes, but they're they're going to work on these turrets pretty quickly right now, especially when they have Jinx back in the vein lane with an advantage. So someday also going to catch right back up in CS after taking this massive wave, which has been slowly meandering to the top tier one. Also, he got some kills and assists right there, so yep. definitely making it worthwhile. Shy, Shy has had some trouble teleporting since this season start. Oh, oh, he nearly got it. Nearly got ambition there, too. Nice hey. attempt with the Jinx rocket from Arrow. Yeah, really, really close to stealing that blue buff. That was from hit. across the map, too. And there was no wow. ward. <laughs> yeah, that was blind, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Man. I mean, they knew that Coco was there. Yeah. But that also prevented the blue buff from being handed off properly, which is If that had been like a, a level bonus. 2 Jinx ult, that probably would have killed him. Nagne, meanwhile. He's not, he hasn't really caught up in CS, but he hasn't gotten any farther behind. So he has been able to stabilize a bit anyway in the mid lane. Taking a lot of damage on that turret though. Yeah, I wouldn't count CJ out yet. Oh, I, no. I really wouldn't. I, I think that Coco's an extremely good place to carry this game. And Shy, even though he's died a couple times, really isn't that far behind. Yeah, Nagne having a really hard time with Coco. Yeah, Dragon up again. Getting those Twin Fang resets on him with the poison, too, and just chasing him down. Yep. It's interesting, though. We've seen at MSI in the finals, we saw um, we saw Easy Hoon win both sides of this matchup, actually. That's true. It's a matchup that we saw a couple times there, so. Yeah. Oh, Shockwave brings in Coco. He's in a lot of trouble here. Nice ult, though, onto Someday. Might get Coco his life, but not quite. Ambition coming in, though. Wild growth onto Someday, so it looks like both sides will survive with a couple ults used. Uh, KT, not using his, though. KT going to be able to translate that actually probably into a dragon here, whereas seems that way. CJ more than likely just going to be pushed off. We'll see how hard they want to commit, but I doubt they want to go anywhere right now to try and contest this with the way that Arrow has a nice item advantage at the moment. And look at Arrow, too, getting the Berserker Greaves completed before he goes after a bigger ticket item. This is extremely good for fast pushing, and if space ever leaves lane... Oh, big melee in the bot lane. Exhaust onto space here as Arrow tries to back away. Flash from Fixer. Looks like he'll be able to make it out, though. Yeah, they tried to cut the corner on the lane right there and didn't anticipate that Ambition would be on the bottom side, so yeah. they get punished for it a little bit. But again, if space leaves lane, which is harder to do because he has some he has some lifesteal right now. He's got some sustain in that cutlass. But if he does, that tower's dead, 100%. Oh, yeah. Well, same for Nagne, too. His tower pretty low. Same for Someday as well, honestly. Like, CJ on the verge of taking three very quick turrets here if they get the opportunity. Yeah, well, that was because Someday has been trying to make plays on the oh, map. Does close. tag Shy, not able to delay the recall, even though the damage goes through. Mm -hmm. And there is a warrior enchant for Ambition, so not going... The Makes way of sense. the Cinder Hulk right now, but he's been unable on Lee Sin to make a play in the first 11 minutes of this game. Well, it's not the greatest thing for Lee Sin, but we'll see what he can do later. I mean, all he needs is one good kick on Jinx, and that can turn the game around. Right, and Shy also going for that Righteous Glory, and they're going to be in a very nice power spike when that Righteous Glory is completed to make a teleport play alongside Lee Sin when he's going to be at his strongest point of the game. So the setup can be pretty good right now for CJ Antis. Yeah, they've got CS leads, uh, pretty big ones in top and mid too. Yeah, especially mid lane. That's yeah. huge on a champion that is going to keep on stacking up like Cassiopeia. Blue buff handed over to Nagne. And Shy gonna walk all the way back. Has enough wards that he's gonna feel pretty safe right there. It'd be nice if he could take out the pink ward in the river, but just gonna stick around in the safest place possible, waiting for this big wave to come back. Yeah, KT not really able to do that fast pushing that they wanted to, it looks like. They don't have to commit to it, though, is yeah. the thing. They can still farm up and wait for the late game just as well as CJ can. Well, it's like we said, too. They can split push. They can be team fight oriented. They can kind of change things up given the situation. And it looks like they're going to have to. 
Maybe a bit of a play on the Coco here. A score coming in. Yeah, Preseeker, so they're going to let him know that they're there. Alistair looks like he may have also been seen. Yep. As Rek'Sai takes out the big board. Here Whoa. we go. Madlife tried to make a play into Nagne. Nagne got out of there with the flash. So getting that summoner is pretty nice. I would trade a, oh, actually Madlife flash too. So it was summoner for summoner. Shy taking a lot of damage here. Needs to be careful. Score could come over the wall and make a play here. Coco Coco's here. Behind Dangerous. Them, yeah, that's right. They're going to kill Shy before anything else. Maybe someday flashing in for that kill. They're really committing. They're going deep for it. And here comes Coco. Will he get the double? There's one easy. It scored a lot of trouble. Yeah, Ambition right there as well, too. Double kill for Coco. KT really over committing with that one. I mean, Nagne saw Coco leave lane. I don't know what happened there. Well, there's no way that Nagne can pursue him as well, given how strong Nagne is at the moment. They had no wards in the topside jungle either. You Just would that's think, not the play you want to make. You would think, though, that Nagne would say, hey, Coco is heading your direction, yeah. and you wouldn't chase and Shai all the way down there. After they failed to kill Shai before getting him under the turret, they still could have absolutely gotten out of that situation oh, yeah. if they didn't dive the turret. So really... Silly overcommit all day. Lost two two players, two flashes for one. And they gave it to the person you don't want to give kills yeah, to right now. Exactly. Too. Coco Coco has a massive opportunity to carry this game. That also helps them close that gold gap. In terms of farm, uh, CJ and is doing just fine. Even space as a result of that freezing, which looked like it could go really wrong in the early game. They've managed to keep that tower up, so they haven't been overly punished for it, and they've gotten some damage onto the mid lane too de thanks to the roaming from Nagne so yeah so this is looking up for CJ it certainly is although you know again KT with a team that scales well they can still come back and win it with a team fight late certainly possible I would be very worried about this Cassiopeia though yeah uh, extremely worried two kills already on that champion big farm advantage hmm Ambition in awards, so Arrow and Fixer know what's up here. They're going to be able to clear it at least. So are they going to want to fight? Coco actually has some decent items right now, working towards that Seraph's Embrace after his Abyssal Scepter. Yeah. They can be well set up. Yep. CS lead, uh, well, someday catching up with the CS in top lane. Nagne still way behind. Yeah, this Oriana lane has not gone quite as well for some days, I think KT, or uh, for Nagne rather, as KT would have wished. Yeah, here's the setup for the Dragon. Trying to punish space right now. Oh, nice, oh, nice condemn. Condemn. Oh, but he flashes in with the Pulverizer as he exhausts as well. Score coming in. Space flashes the rocket, though. And now the teleport coming in for both top laners. Actually, Space Sunday is. canceled his right there. That yeah, he did. Well, so looks shy, like. fast on the trigger, but they used the opportunity that they had gained from Ambition and Mad Life both being back at base right there to try and punish him. But that was actually some really nice play by Space. Yeah. Buffering the Condemn super well on the engage and then forcing the flash and then flashing the rocket afterwards. Did leave him with no summoners for this upcoming fight, however. Yep, that is true. No alt for Arrow, though. Nagne has his arrow, doing a lot of damage to Mad Life. Oh, Condemning Swall, what a combo. There's the old arrow just blown up. Man, what a catch for CJ. That was nice. Yeah. Wow. Especially since they didn't have any summoners, it was very important that they actually get a pick off right there. So they yeah. pick one up, and there is another dragon for CJ. Well, a bit of an error by uh, Arrow being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, he's really vulnerable. Yes, he is. He is playing Jinx. He's playing Jinx, and unless everyone is grouped up right there, there's not a lot of peel for him. But yeah, he needed to be more careful careful around the pit. Yeah, look at all the wards in there for CJ too. They, there was no mystery about where KT was before that happened. Missed the Glitter Lance, so they couldn't follow up on that Whimsy yeah. on Anagne. Yeah, looking for a Shockwave there, but didn't get it. Fight over the blue buff here. Smite it away by Ambition. Smote away. Smitten away. That's not the right word. <laughs> they were smitten with the blue buff. They were, and they got it. That's right. Okay, well, I'm liking the way this looks for CJ right now. Certainly. Uh, chilling Smite on the arrow, kick back into Mad Life. Again, arrow in big trouble here. Fixer trying to save his AD carry. Looks like he'll be able to. 
A close call, though, again for Arrow. And it's situations like this that are the reason why Korea doesn't like to use Jinx very much. She doesn't really have the escapes, and that's really made her uh, uh, not a preferable pick in Korea. Yeah, and had to use both summoners yeah. in order to get away from that as well. And now Jinx is basically just a sitting duck for the next five minutes. Uh, Ambition can return as soon as his ultimate is back up again. Try and make that same play one more time, especially Mad Life's ult almost being up as well. And having the flash, he'll be able to flash ult arrow if he really wants to. Ambition looks like he doesn't want to make a repeat gank onto the bottom side, wants to move into top instead. And Score just there to protect his dual lane as they push out so they don't lose their tower right away. Hmm. And it uh, doesn't look like Jinx is quite ready to recall yet. Just going to go ahead and wait for the wave to return. Well, probably waiting for his next big component of an item. Just picked up the IE, the Berserker's Greaves. He should have enough for something fairly soon. As they push this lane up. Blue buff going over to Coco, of course. Yeah. Space is certainly getting to be Quite a big threat here. Nagne is still 30 CS down to uh, Coco. Yeah, hasn't, that's... Hasn't been able to close that gap all game. And the kills, too. Especially since Nagne has been roaming. But hasn't even been able to get assists off of that. There goes the turret as Coco... Wow. Great lane for Coco. Very, very really well, well done. We, we didn't get to see much of it, unfortunately, in the early game when he first started to get out to that really big CS advantage. Yeah, I would have liked to see some of that just to see how the movement was between the two players. The funny thing is KT actually has more kills this game, but it's not really about that. It's about this Cassiopeia getting most of the kills on CJ. Yeah, she is. Coco's an absolute monster right now. He's going to go back, make some really big purchases. It's like they may see the... Archangels and what other goodies? Nope, Death Cap actually had wow. enough money just to go straight into Death Cap, so he's going to do that. that. Damage. Yeah. yeah. Well, KT should be able to get this turret here. A Q used by Mission. Oh, they're going to go through. Man, life ults onto Arrow. Arrow knocked up. They still take out the turret. Arrow getting excited here. Uh, yeah, CJ made a decision to try and Space. defend that tower when Cassiopeia was back, and they were at TP disadvantage. So that was a bit. Greedy. They could have just given it up and fallen back, considering the state of the game at the current time. They're already doing very, very well. Yeah. But instead, Shy is just going to split push. He's going to have a TP advantage in about 30 seconds, though. So CJ may be able to respond, especially onto Arrow. If he goes back with that Righteous Glory, he can definitely make a play right now to catch Arrow out without that flash. And they yeah. may be able just to respond in kind in the end. KT is caught up in turrets by taking down that tier one in bot lane. Dragging up in about a minute 30 again. And KT still wow. keeping it relatively Coco. close. Coco has a huge gold advantage. He does. But, I mean, one shockwave could change all that. Well, the problem is Orianna is down so far in terms of core items that the Shockwave really isn't going to be doing much damage. And you see Ambition working on that Aegis at the moment as well, which is going to be very effective. Once they get Aegis and Frozen Heart from CJ, KT's composition may run into some issues. Hmm. Those items are particularly important. And yeah, nobody really close on KT to buying a Frozen Heart. And I also don't even know who would buy a Frozen Heart in this team. Score is the most likely option, but Fixer. he's going for a Randuin's Omen right now. And Fixer would take forever to buy one at this stage. Yeah, I suppose. So. Oh, Coco trying to make a catch there, but he dodges the W from Jinx. So yeah, the, the fact that Space will have more DPS without a Frozen Heart on the enemy team in the late game is probably going to be pretty significant. Yeah. Uh, looks like KT just wants to take out this mid lane turret. And are they going to be able to do it? Certainly able to do a lot of damage very quickly to it. And everybody backing up. Looks like they might have a pick on to Shy here. But Shy thinking about trying to come in for a flank here too. Um, CJ, Mad Life in space moving up from, dra uh, from River. Dragon is about to come up again. Yeah, they don't have very many wards on the bottom side though. They've chosen to ward up around the top side of the river so KT could possibly just trade the mid lane turret for it. Looks like that's what they want to do. Yep. But Pushing is good. 
There's a glory on the other team, and this Jinx has to be, well, Jinx has flash up back now, so that's yeah. definitely a boon. But okay, Dragon Beam taken space. by space only right now. Yeah, he can just solo this. Yep, that's right, Ambition joining in as well. Here we go, KT coming in onto Shy, onto Mad Life. Space and Coco able to do a lot of damage. Dragon taken by CJ, Nogne goes down. Two kills already, Ambition taking the Dragon and Nogne, and KT on the run, chasing down Someday, Someday with a wild growth on himself, not going to be able to make it out. And Ambition decides to just go after the blue buff at this and point. they're gonna CJ go going to go for right Baron. For Baron. Yeah. I mean, they have Cassiopeia Vayne. They can absolutely wreck this Baron at this point in the game. Those Silver Bolts coming in. Look how fast this Baron's going to go down. Yeah. For 23 minutes. It's and only a 2k gold advantage. It's pretty significant, but looks like... Ooh, oh. oh, Rocket? No, not even close. It was a nice try. Nice attempt. Oh, Cassiopeia went really high there. Yeah. So let's take a look at that fight again. So, I mean, Shy was just hiding in the pink warded brush right there, so it wasn't the best engage, actually. And then Shy just gets everybody. Look at that flash ult from Coco, too. Beautifully played. Gets a big slow and one stun. And then his speed just allows him to move through these team fights. I mean, Cassiopeia and Vayne are both so good at chasing down targets. Yeah. And so when KT splits up like that, it gets them exactly where they want. Just in those little skirmishes, Coco just repeatedly spams E on one target, and then Vayne follows through on another one. Absolutely. It's dangerous. It, it almost feels similar to last game, where you've got these carries, you've got this ability to get in and just blow people up, and once that starts happening, the snowball starts to roll downhill pretty quickly. Yeah. Someday with the Desperation Magi's right now, just on the hope that they can get back into this game. But going to be unlikely, especially since Coco has three core items done. Nagne still trying to get number two. Now the towers are starting falling as the split push starts. Yep. Yeah, this one's going to be pretty tough for KT to turn around unless CJ makes some pretty big mistakes. And I don't think CJ is going to be inclined to let, inclined to let that happen after last game. So starting just a 4-1 split push right here, pretty standard stuff. Someday hanging back near his turret, but without a lot of AP, he's going to have a really hard time clearing out these Baron-empowered minions. So yep. now CJ switching their attention to the mid lane. They want to just let this Vayne farm the next wave by herself. She's hiding in the brush right now. Space in the pink ward, just trying to take an advantage and make it as difficult for KT to respond as possible. Looks like they're going to get some chip damage down on the tower at the very least. Well, Coco's up about 3,000 gold over uh, Nagne right now. This Oriana pick not working very well. Oh, meanwhile, Someday caught under turret. Knocked back out again with that Dragon's Rage. Used the wild growth on himself, but still gets taken out by Ambition and the rest of CJ. And they're going to get this tier two as well. It just seems like it's too late for KT now. Yeah, they're pushing on forward. And just so many turrets going down during this Baron. Really good rotations between the towers by CJ Entis right here just to chip them all out slowly. Ambition has the good dive in the top lane, so they help Shy get back into this game even more than he already was. Shy was never that far down, all things considered. Yeah, very true. Shockwave oh, brings into nice Coco. A lot of damage onto him. They're going to be able to get him. All right, well, KT makes a pick. That's going to save this mid lane turret. Now, can they get anything from TB, this? TB, 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 TB. Yeah, Someday teleport coming in. Coming in. They want to try to catch Shy here. Don't think they're going to be able to. Well, they're working on Mad Life right now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, turret, though, taken by space. Looks like they take out they Mad Life. They have to Life. save their inhibitor right now. Yeah, this getting these picks is just not worth it. And now Shy can try to delay people. The back for Arrow. And it looks like. Space can't quite kill the turret. Two kills not worth it for another tier two turret, however. No. CJ still has a massive gold lead, and there was no other objective that could be taken. All the lanes were pushed up for CJ Antis, and that'll mean nothing really that KT can do to maximize their uh, advantage. Oh, space and Ambition are coming up. KT does not want to fight this. Wow, Fixer going in on the Space, getting condemned away. Space just walking casually out of their score. Hits him with the smite, though, but Space pops the Aldi. Should be just fine. KT backing away. Yeah, good disengage from KT on that. Yep. It was a 5v3, so CJ not wanting to go in. 
CJ threatening this fourth dragon here in about a minute too. So that's going to be kind of the uh, the do or die fight, I think, for KT. If they let CJ take that dragon, I think it's over. Yeah, I would agree with you. And what an interesting game focused around the mid lane right there because we saw how hard Nogne was dominated in this matchup, but it really looked like KT was going to win the side lane battles, but in the yeah. end, uh, they weren't able to push their advantage as hard as they could. The A couple of those minion waves, I think, had they gone a different way and had those two outer turrets died in terms of top and bottom a minion wave or two earlier for KT we may be looking at a very different game yeah but some mispositioning around the dragon as well for KT has cost them and CJ has been there to punish at every opportunity KT certainly came close to making this work it's I mean it looks one-sided but I feel like this is actually a fairly close game initially yeah, it's funny because we have this large gold lead that's coming through thanks to a, a CS advantage. Looks shy actually with a CS edge right now. Yeah. And uh, just a large number of turrets as well as the Baron going down to bolster CJ's coffers. And we have Speed Shrine right now. Fantastic with Cassiopeia in vain. Dragon about to spawn. Not really much that KT's going to be able to do to stop this. Yeah, well, again, this is the fight. They need to win it, but someday is not there. It doesn't have TP, so it looks like they're just going to go for the mid lane turret instead. They still haven't taken down the tier one. They're not going to get it this time either. Nope. CJ playing some yeah. well, that's about tight it. defense in this one as they try and steal away that blue buff as well. Barring and some major, major errors. That yeah. should be about it. Space going to grab the blue buff, so will they wait for this next Baron? Probably they can just go ahead and bait the Baron. They can also do it incredibly fast. Yep. True enough. You know, if I was that Cassiopeia skin and I had like the little snake heads on my head, I would just use those heads to like carry groceries or something, you know? Free up your arms for other stuff. But you wouldn't be able to see very well with grocery bags in front of your face. Well, they're on the side though. It wouldn't block your vision. I don't know. Grocery bags can get pretty big. Might well, be difficult. Well, you just like have the snake heads hang down a bit, you know? Like behind your back or something. <laughs> yeah, Makes it easier. Because you got to get them all in one trip, right? Right. So having extra tiny arms on your head yeah. <laughs> might be pretty helpful. See, the other thing I would do too is that when I was done and I had succeeded doing this, I would have the snake heads like kind of high five each other. <laughs> be like, yeah. With their mouths. That's right. <laughs> pretty much. It's not really a lot of five in that high five. Depends on how many teeth are involved, I suppose. <laughs> pretty sure more than or fewer than uh, fewer You have than no five. idea how many teeth snakes, snakes have. have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. So we'll just assume I'm right. Uh, I think it's Naturally. two. Two fangs. No, they have more teeth than that. Snakes have more than just two <laughs> teeth. <laughs> two fangs. <laughs> yeah, two fangs, but not two teeth. I mean, twin fangs is pretty obvious, right? <laughs> They've got a whole mouth of teeth. I don't know the answer to this question. I'm not a snake biologist, Doa. I didn't go in. Oh, oh, there's the Oh, flash engage. grab on Anagne. Knocked away immediately, though. Wild growth on Anagne as well to keep him alive. Meanwhile, Shy gets way back in the enemy lines. Space exhausted, but still doing quite a bit of damage. There's a nice shockwave, though, bringing in a lot of CJ. But KT already on the run. There goes Arrow, Arrow rather. <laughs> and CJ should be able to clean up this fight. Triple kill for Ambition. Wow, look at this. A double for Coco. That is a pretty clean ace. As CJ is ready to end it. Perhaps right here, right now. We'll see how fast they can burn through these objectives. Yeah, they don't have that many minion waves to follow up. Also, Death Timer is not the longest of 30 minutes in this game, but it they're looks like it. they're going to be able to finish. Uh, I believe so. Ambition taking a lot of damage. There's a lot of turret damage coming in, but with that surviving minion wave, should be plenty. Arrow and Nagne up in a little bit, along with Fixer. They're going for the Nexus, but yeah, there's no way. There's no way. And there it goes. So CJ comes back and takes game two. GG. Yeah, it looks like we will be moving to this third game as expected with yep. both these teams so close. Yeah, looking in just terms as of performance. Yeah, looking just as evenly matched as we thought they would. Yeah, this this Which is game, good. This both, is a good thing. You know, both teams really snowballing effectively, showing how well they they can close out games in the caliber of their play. Uh, a couple of mistakes in the early game for both teams, but the punishment has been pretty hard. KT. Not looking too happy after that one. What we've seen as well is is compositions where when one team gets an edge, if they can snowball it well, it yeah. goes really hard. So 
both of those games appearing kind of one-sided for each side, but essentially the entire game is determined in the first 10 minutes or so with those types of comps conflicting. Yeah, the snowballs have been have been pretty impactful in this series so far. So I'd say so. That's 